It is time, everybody. It is February 2019. And we have a very poorly Dyson V10 in min. There's nothing. You have to go pretty much to max to get any suction. And I'm comparing this to Mr. Hooverlux's decent one. So there is something wrong. We also have some physical damage. We need to have a look and fix it. And already... I can sense the comments. Let's have a look. Yes, hello my vacuum cleaner chums, how? are you today oh it didn't take long did it i'll caveat this a little bit because i don't want to come across as a raging vacuum plastic this it probably isn't terrible i'll be honest it's okay minimum does have some suction max has some suction but there is definitely something amiss with it first in being that the filter is quite grubby now, I don't know the history of this. I don't know if it's ever been washed. I don't know how it's been used, but it's it's grubby. There's dust all around the seals. It's a bit meh, but I don't think that's fully the problem. I can't test it. With the older ones, you could take the filter out and sort of check by putting your hand over, but now it can't do anything. In fact, if I try it, the filter sign flashes like mad at me and it won't do anything so but there is a bit of air leaking out of this hole and it stinks i'm getting a waft of dog so we need to wash this filter sadly they don't come apart so i can't take the pre-filter apart from the post filter so i'll pop that to one side and wash it later what we next need to do though is have a look at this hole which is going to mean taking it apart slightly which is going to be fun because i don't think anyone knows how to so we shall take the bit off which is very dusty already the seal at the top is full of a nice thin layer of dirt here we have the shroud mechanism which is again covered in dirt although the seal hasn't distorted that's not too horrific i'll be honest we need to take the battery out next because i'm not playing with this whilst it's got a battery fitted no, 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 I'm not completely silly, just fairly. So, just pop the screw out in here. I got given this by a regular customer of mine. She knows it's under warranty, but she because obviously she dropped it, warranty doesn't cover accidental damage. Which is a bit worried as to what they might say. So I said I would have a look at it for her. I'm not charging her very much for it at all. In fact, I got given this when I took back her DC 14 that needed a new motor. So I like her. She's a very nice lady. I'm not going to rip her off. I want the video, I'll be honest. This is very exciting just to get the video. So there seem to be three screws holding the battery on. They are Phillips or crosshead. So you can take them off. So when the batteries start to fail on these, and it is when, not if, V6s are going through it at the minute, you can simply take it off. Now this works very much like the V6, possibly the V8, V7. I don't know, I never have one. The switch is actually in the battery. That is the switch there. 
So it's all self-contained in our 2600 milliamp hour batteries, which denotes to 525 watts in our presume max. So I'll pop that up there as well, nice and safely. So we are now isolated, which is good. It's very good. The next thing that we need to do is to separate this silver part here. And again, there are many screws. And again, they all seem to be Phillips, which is good. I've got to be a little bit careful here. This video is heavily caveated by the fact that you may not see it if I can't actually do this. Because, I, yeah, I, I don't want to stuff the warranty up. Worst case scenario, obviously, it can be fixed under warranty. But... It's these crosshead screws, you see. It wouldn't have them if you weren't able to. I'll just move my horrible legs back. I'm, I'm, I'm at home today, in case you hadn't noticed. This is an extra special. I've got my phone out. I've got my tripod and light back. And I've actually got. This is a Dell that I'm giving away tomorrow, but it won't work on this. So I've got Team Viewer running, so I can have a viewfinder. So I can actually see what the hell I'm doing. That's why I don't film with my phone. Mr. Hooverlux does. But he's okay because he stays in one place. I don't. Ooh, there we go. So. That separates. In fact, there's still a screw in there somewhere. Come on, out you come. That separates the motor from the machine. And as you can see, that is quite dirty. I don't. I'm, I'm hoping you can see that on camera. There is a fair bit of dust in there. A fair bit of dust. But my gosh, isn't the motor tiny? That motor is teeny weeny weeny. In fact, I spy a torque screw or two wonder how far we can get folks because this is I think one of the first probably not the first I'll be honest but it's going to be one of the first V10 disassembly videos really I mean, we're not doing it full I am only inquiring here but I don't think there's many, is there? Right, that is being stopped by something. There's, ooh, there's wires in there. Why are you not coming out? So I can see two more. No, we're not going to take the motor out. That is how you get the motor out. It's in there. That, and that's, that's, that's very, very good. Actually, that is the motor in there. I don't want to pull it because there are many wires attached to it. And as much as I am a fairly confident person, I'm, this isn't mine. I can't really help. So, yeah, I think... It looks like plaster dust. It feels like plaster dust. It probably is plaster dust, which is a bit of a shame. So there's that part anyway. We're not too fussed about that. We need to go a step further because we've only got to this stage, which isn't far enough because we still got our hole here. So what I spy is three torque screws here and this is reminiscent of the other Dysons in general where you have to go in through the cyclone almost to get out anything so gosh they're very long aren't they they're very long indeed so we'll take these out there are only three and you can get to them they're not behind this Excuse me, rubbery, not rubbery, plastic part here. So that's fair enough. Now, 
what's going to come apart. This is the problem now. I don't know. There's four more here. Oh, gosh. They probably need to come out anyway, but I've never done... This is why people ask me, oh, can you do a strip down video on X? Or Y or Z? And I say no, because normally I do these off camera. I take my pictures for my Manchester Max thread. But because obviously I don't, I've never done it before. It's just me going, oh, no way. Or, oh, that comes off first and etc etc so that's this is why i don't do them i'll be honest this is an exception because of what it is i thought i would share with you this magical moment aha right so we are now at this stage here with everything split I'm going to pause and work out how to disconnect the wires to the power head and we shall be right back. <sighs> that wasn't too difficult. It's the same way it connects as the V6 was. It clips in, pushes right down there and clips in. Just like the V6 did. I also worked out this seal comes off as well for washing. So... There we go. Look, we could have those seals out there. Back to where we were, which was to get the shroud off. Now, I'm going to take a slight hunch that now that the screws are removed, this is going to be the same as every other Dyson and be a series of horrible, horrible clips somewhere. But I don't know where. And obviously, I don't want to force the thing too much. You see that I can remove this annoying part by taking out this screw. There we go. So there's the cyclone slide mechanism. Gosh, that is loose. I just need to do it without snapping this black trim. Deal with little dinks, I don't want to actually break it properly. I'll just loose at the top. What stop? Oh, there's fluff everywhere in there. This is awful. Come on. Come on. Also, don't want to have to keep pausing because I don't want to sit here too long. I don't do that too much either. Ah. We cannot damage the vacuum cleaner. Oh, blimey, come on. Hang on. It's here. Those cheeky beggars. Okay, look. It hooks over that part. Ha ha! Right, so we have the inside of the shroud, which is again covered in dirt, so it scrapes off the outside nicely. But not the inside so much. There's a nice big dust trap in there. And some more screws. Now at this position we have them at 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock and then the bottom two. So we need to take these apart. As much as I could to be fair turn this into a full refurb. I'm not. We'll get a paintbrush out in a minute. I can give this a dust off, but I'm not. I want this back together tonight. I'm not going all out on a nuts out pictorial thread. That will happen very soon, I'd imagine. It's not going to take long for these to start to fall down in price. Ha ha. 
and become very, very cheap. Let's get the last screw out, which is back here. Isn't the best driver for this because it's not very long. But again, typical Dyson. It's such a small, small screws that you have to use these. Now this is going to be fun. I this black part there is actually the cable coiled and then heat shrunk. And because it's the cable coiled and heat shrunk, I don't want to remove it. How could it however we can just remove that clip for goodness sake he says now we've got to push this through will you even push through oh, you're not going like that's not going to push through so we are going to be holding it like this now let's just take those screws out and holding it like that we can see inside the cyclone mechanism that this has been used for plaster dust on bane of my life, this bloody stuff. But finally, oh, what's holding you in? Ah, nothing. Finally, we can get to our broken piece, which is here. Look at that in a second. This is a cyclone, look. We have... Ah, so they carried on using gaskets. So there's a cyclone gasket there. Here is obviously the one that you can see from the outside of the machine. There we go. Look, we'll have it off. Why not? Obviously, that's going to get, it's already starting to get really dinked and damaged. My DC-54 is doing the same. And then, in theory, there is nothing else holding that part in. So as we can see, the, the, the dust retention on the cyclone is superb. There is no denying that at all. There's nothing wrong here, folks. God's sake. Right, now on to the actual job in hand. I've basically got to finish off this so I can glue it back together. That's what it's, it's, oh, it's creased itself and snapped itself in. And I don't mind finishing it off because I can piece it back together a fair bit more easily. There we go, look. It's not going to look pretty. But that holds itself there. And I can pop this part back on top and then basically just stick a good smear of glue around the entire thing. So I'm going to go and glue this together now. And then, ah, well, that, that bit comes out as well. So I'm going to glue this back together and I shall come back when we are ready to reassemble this thing. Welcome back. Now, while the glue is drying, it's not a pretty fix at all. I'll be honest. It is airtight, however. I accidentally got a little bit carried away. And what do you know? The motor just fell out of this part. It was being held in by these hefty straps that put the voltage to the machine. So here is the printed circuit board of a Dyson V10. Actually, it's not, it is actually an SV12. And here is the motor look, the little digital motor, which is very, very interesting actually. I say it's very interesting because I'm not taking it apart, really, because even I have my limits. Whole thing is very, very dusty though. Oh, I forgot to get a little brush before I, I hit play again. That was very silly. But I shall be cleaning all this up. Do not fear. This is the foam from the end of the motor. You can see all the dirt that's passed straight through into the filter, which is why the filter is so disgusting, really. Although, 
I'm not quite sure at what stage the filter does what. There will be videos out there that show you the air path of one of these. This is not one of those videos. I'll be honest. So we shall pop the motor. Oh, I was going to give it a brush, wasn't I? Uh, we'll give it a wipe instead. Like I said, we're not going for concourse here. It will probably still, it will still work fine. I think it is just that filter that's causing the lack of suction. I am, this is, this is now me just being interested in the whole thing really, and obviously giving us a first look at the future of cordless vacuum cleaners. Ooh, isn't it exciting folks? Right, try not to take the mic too much. <laughs> that simply pushes into there, that is all that does. Where was the other bits and bobs? This is actually the speed control board. There, look. Which pops into here, in fact, which will have, its rubber seal is completely covered in crap as well. So that sits in there, then that just plugs into the board like so. Then, We'll give in here a good wipe out. Because why the devil not, eh? There are some more screws. Those two screws there. In the side. Are how you get into all the switch and whatnot. Oh, I can manipulate the switch, look. We're not going into that. We don't need to. That's a step too far. What I do need to do is feed... The little wires, because there is one little tiny wire, which needs a bit of persuasion. And then the two huge, thick, massive ones. Oh, wow. I've also got to feed the circuit board in. There we go. Another little tiny wire. Uh, I'll have to stand up to show you this because I'm quite far back from the camera. The little white wire sits on this black connector here and simply pushes down over it like so. Now, to get these beefy power connectors off, I did have to bend the crimps. So bend them back. And they are actually these two stout screws here and they just screw back in simple as really it's not too difficult except uh, I've got to put my spongy foam back so basically you do those screws up clip this back on and that's that I'm gonna do all that now because I've got to really <laughs> and then you don't want to see all that come apart again and then we shall carry on reassembling this machine Welcome back. I found a little paintbrush. So we can start to dust things off as we go. So this is the motor cover. It's even, look, you can see it packed in around the edge of the seals. So we'll clean that off because why not? Wipe down the gaskets as we go because as anybody who's ever done anything with a Dyson will tell you the rubber seals are important. They are possibly the most important part of a Dyson in keeping its suction. So there we go. We'll clip that back on. Do its two, it was the bottom screws on this one. Where's me? There's me little screwdriver. Look. No, ah, I need the screws are the same flipping size, except some have got Torx heads and some haven't. That is literally the only difference between the various screws on this machine, apart from the really long cyclone ones, obviously. They're different. That's that. That is as far as the motor goes in now. 
I still haven't actually worked out where the sensor is. Because obviously there's probably built in to the actual motor housing somewhere. And there'll be a corresponding chip in this filter. Which means I possibly... Sh ah, it might take a machine wash. Don't know really. Wasn't going to look into that in this video. Well, we'll see. We're not on about the filter now. So that is back together. Ah, put the little slider control back on. That seems to just clip in quite nicely. There we go. Leave that in mid. Now, back to this. I'm ready to get the worst of the dust off because I can't let it go back like this but then again this isn't the full strip and wash because crikey it could be stripped and washed but no this i've only really got this to do this video for us here and now but i can't let it go back in this state this is <coughs> oh blow Hello. Terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. God, it's all in here. Yeah, don't use a £500 flipping cordless stick vacuum for plaster dust. Don't use any of that. Well, you can use obviously a proper vacuum cleaner for plaster. Don't use any Dyson for plaster dust. This is the one thing that bugs me with my hobby, I always rant on about how Dyson aren't that great, blah, blah, blah. This doesn't help. Kills any sort of argument I might have stone dead because, yeah, you're not supposed to use Dyson as a plaster dust because it's lighter than the cyclone can handle. End of argument, really. It's, it's, a, it's a right old pain sometimes. Because, yeah, I... I this probably this may not have done it with normal dust. Imagine it oh gosh. I imagine it possibly will. We shall find out in the future, no doubt. But yeah, plaster dust, definitely not. Just goes to show though that you can have a multi billion pounds, I'd imagine that would have cost, advertising campaign for anything. And it can still be completely overwhelmed. By simple bit of dust. There we go. Oh, this is part one one one. No, T one one two one two eight two B. Interesting. And this part clips in to the middle, roughly like so. He says, with it not clipping in. Ah, that's why I've got to put the tabs in first, have I? Oh, it slides. Ah, it slides in to those sliders. Well, oh, there are sliders. This is quite difficult to show myself filming it. I'm hoping it comes out all right. You'll probably see if it doesn't. Quite frankly, haven't come all this way to not. Ha <laughs> ha. So that's those. We need this part here next to gasket it all up just get the worst of the dust off rubbity rubbity rub rubbity rubbity scrub there we go Ooh. Clean all the gaskets off. This is just what I had to do with vacuum of the month for February when I refurbished it because obviously it was filterless. This at least has filters. Obviously, you, you can Dyson gave up on the whole kinetic filterless idea pretty quickly. Can't quite imagine why, personally. So we'll pop, and you've got to do these one at a time. I don't think these will have the power to kill these gaskets. If you know the DC-25 and the DC-24, they eat these rubber gaskets, or well, foam gaskets for breakfast. This won't have the power to do that. 
so that's one less thing to worry about the gasket should last I won't say the lifetime of the machine because that's a very cliche thing to say with a Dyson it'll last let's put it that way right now that goes on there and already my fix is now squeezing on to that thing to the housing which is good which will just get the worst of the crap off quite frankly and then we can put the top cover on and start fitting the screws which was one there one here one here and one here god's sake don't follow this as a full unequivocal guide really this is just this is just a rabid vacuum fan having a bit of a laugh and learning tremendously car the next time somebody says all the time the first time anybody on facebook in my local area says oh my v10 isn't sucking up i will now be able to go ah oh that's me forward a bit I can now help you, sir and or madam. Because so I'll be honest, I have turned down work before purely because I've been a little bit, you know, oh, I haven't done one of those before. I don't normally like doing machines for other people first. I like to buy them cheap. We do my usual video on it. I strip it all down and, you know, get a how-to guide out of it, but... Ultimately, I also learn how it works on my own machine. So if it fails and I break it, worst comes to the worst, it's only me that's going to lose out. I don't owe anybody a vacuum cleaner. He says, merely taking apart a £500 machine. Hey-ho, you have to live dangerously sometimes. Right, oh, that shroud is... Utterly, utterly, but you can see where I've swiped. <laughs> utterly bonkers. It's all just sitting there. This shroud's quite good though. It's not as flimsy as the plastic ones that they used to use. So we'll give this a wipe down. And then we have to fit it. You only go one way because obviously you've got to clip. everything lines up somehow ah the screw holes help I'm missing something here there's again part of it slots down another part go which then locks it into place I've just got to tweak this outer trim piece there we go ah beautiful right the other three screws go in here the long ones everything else is now Torx versus Phillips but of the same size which is nice. In fact, I know what I was going to do quickly. We'll get these screws in. I was going to see if you could run it without anything attached. I imagine we possibly can. I've still got to clean all of this out, but I'll do that off camera. I won't bother doing that in this video, quite frankly. You all know how to wipe down a vacuum cleaner with a baby wipe, I'd imagine. If you don't, well, it's quite an easy thing to learn, quite frankly. What I did want to have a quick crack at doing was popping the battery back in. We've got to put the filter on. Oh, it knows. It knows that I haven't got the cyclone connected or something not connected. Fair enough, we should carry on. We're not far away now. 
at all. Because next we have to fit this piece. Actually, now I know that they come apart. Oh, wait, wrong way there. I'm hoping that I can actually fit it back to front and push the wires through and connect it up. So I'm going to try that now off camera because it's going to be fiddly. And I still have lots of brushing to do because this bit is caked in dust inside and outside. And I'll come back for the final part. Well, say so there's nothing there because it's here. All back together. Not too difficult, really. I can see so much of my V6 in this from when I took it apart. Obviously, I haven't had a V8 or V... I keep forgetting about the V7. Poor V7. Everyone always forgets about it. I can see lots of that. I have had those, so I can't comment. Obviously, I only comment on things that I know about. Then I cannot be accused of lying. It's always good to do. So, no, sorry, not good to lie. What I also did was I had a bit of a prat around, and this does run without being fitted. And it shows you how the filter sort of works. Because there is a break in the heading bone, you know, the, the holes. And there is a seal halfway down that filter. And when you stick it in, you can see you can see it come through. And that is obviously how it separates them. So yeah, the dirty air comes flying through all these holes, batters that, goes around the edge, then sucks itself through that filter into the motor out and then back out the other end so this is quite clever does however mean that there is some sort of sensor in this filter now i was going to put this through the washing machine i have pretty much decided on it but i am not because it probably be right with the water yes i know the filter nice fashion now it'll probably be okay water wise you know it won't kill the filter but it'll be the heat i just don't know what the heat will do to anything and obviously as much as you know me i'll try anything it's not mine i can't that is my golden rule with obviously doing the hobby that i have messing around with vacuum cleaners you saw it with the dyson ball animal 2 where i just stopped at certain points because if it all went wrong i've got to pay for it i'm not insured i am a you know a bloke who basically sits here and does exactly this just not on film i can't go try everything as soon as we buy one of these and you know They've been out long enough and you can get nice pattern filters for sod all. We will. Until then, no. I just cannot risk it. So, we can put the bin back on. Which isn't as easy to manoeuvre without holding the rest of the machine. If I try and hold it like that, that's very difficult. We need to stick it back here. So I'm just going to, once again, take out the battery. In fact, there's the battery screws there. We'll put those there. We need this massive bundle here. And that simply pushes onto there like so. And then you put all the screws back in. One, two, three, and four at the top. Put those in because this will pull the housing together and stop it from being such a pain in the bum. Two. 
three. And four there. Then there's two back here. Which is probably to reinforce the bin empty mechanism. It does seem to put a lot of strain on this whole joint just for trying to work it without. It does need a lot of stiction power. There we go. Aha, that's better. Cool. So there's that. Crikey, we are pretty much done. You might be noticing I, I I don't have any of the tools with this, I'm afraid. I'm very, very tempted because she said it didn't work very well. And I've realised, yes, it isn't working as well as it could, but it is working. I, When it goes back, I'm going to tell her that if, because it, it's not actually hers, it's her sister's, but her sister has health problems, so I'm dealing with her. If it's still no good, give it back to me, but with the one floor tool and charging because obviously half of these relies on the brush roll itself to you know pull stuff out of the carving this suction only won't be that great it relies on the brush roll so if it's still no good i shall probably do it through a charge obviously we can get another video out of it which would be cool so as far as i'm concerned i still need to wash the filter but <laughs> I can hear the air a bit more now. There's such a massive jump between like normal and that. I can hear the airflow. I can't hear the airflow. It's alright, it's there. I wouldn't say it's any better than the V6. And that's just little dustery, rustery. They're just a they, they are form over function. And as I'm hope that we have demonstrated today. They're not all that great anyway. Right, we'd best wash the filter, haven't we? And Dyson themselves and other well-known informative vacuum, there's paint on this, that reinforces my plaster dust. Other you know, well-known, possibly respected, other YouTubers have said how to wash the filter. Like this says as well, you fill it full of water and thrush it around. Should we give it a go? There is a good look at how it looks now. It is grubby. Grubby, grubby. Let's go to the kitchen. Well, I now can't see myself how I'm on it. I was going to make a coffee before I got distracted. So we should use the cold tap. I can't really tell if it looks any cleaner now because it's all wet. And you just do that. I mean, I suppose you swell it around. I will do that because I would like to, but yeah. It's not letting the water, I, mean, I suppose if I turn it down it would. Now, let's turn it down to trickle. Because one thing I always note about filters, especially the ones on, you know, the ones in the middle of the side throw, the water should flow out faster than it can flow in and this is barely doing that but the water goes it does go down there we go shake off as much of the excess as i can and it looks maybe a little bit cleaner I suppose i'm being a bit skewed because that white band is the glue that holds it in there though it's still not what i would call clean in fact you probably can't see it but uh, let, me, let me do it so i can actually see what i'm filming in there look that still as grubby as it was that is no better but we have washed the filter i am going to in fact you can come with me look 
slow. Time of film, this is his still favourite. The heating will come on. You can't see anyway. The heating will come on at six o'clock. That's actually why this is here. This is I'm halfway through painting this. But it got too dark and cold. I need to put a second coat on that. That will get warm. That will sit in there. I might even move it up to the airing cupboard tomorrow. But I didn't. So there we go, folks. Look, this is how raw this is. There is no making anything up here. I've been sat there. You have been sat there. That's the crappy laptop that's going tomorrow. Nothing edited. I have not doctored this in any way. In fact, I'll show you how unedited this is. I got given this one as well. I've got a fifth DC-34. Although it works okay. <laughs> Apart from, in fact, I could probably do this now and put it with the other one. The filter just needs a wash. Yeah, that's a DC-34. <laughs> oh, I didn't think they worked without the thing. Either way, yeah. But, DC-34 versus Dyson V10... I know which one you'd rather see. So there we go. In fact, no, there we don't go. I've got to show you the filter tomorrow. There we go for tonight. I can stop filming now. I shall carry on in 24 hours. It's even later in the night. And I've just had a revelation. Look. It comes off. Granted, you have to be very careful to hit the tabs. But that should be alright because it's a really tight fit and it will clip on. Look at the state of it there. Now we have removed it from the cage and more importantly, look at the state of it there. Focus. That's the post motor filter. So it's not coming through there, but these are going to be almost disposable. So what I'm doing is. Running a thing of hot water. Ow! And in this thing of hot water, we got given these, and Amy doesn't like them and won't use them. So I pinched them because they're bio. I use them to do this. Bloop. We'll leave that overnight. Give it a good rinse out tomorrow. That should sort it really really well because that is pretty disgusting a little experiment we'll do this i'll then show you how to clip it back on but please be sure you do the four tabs i don't think i did which is why they did snap a little bit but they should be okay obviously once it's on the machine it pushes it back in anyway we're going to take the risk we've taken the risk we take risks here on becker 1987 so yeah, a little rinse does sod all when your filter is actually dirty. Time to bring out the big gun. So I'll go to bed now. Good night. Now, before we see how the filter came out after this proper bath, I have been worried about some of the comments that I know I will receive about misuse. You see, I'm, I've got my notes here, so I've, I'll glance you off a little bit, but bear with me. Because you see, I know, and you probably know, that plaster dust and Dysons do not mix. In fact, Bagnus, in general, does not like light, fine dust. But people who've been used to bag cleaners that can cope with it, fine, or if not better, may not know that. Indeed, Dyson used to prominently state in their user guides that users should only suck up very small amounts of plaster dust, or that doing so would clog up the filter faster, presumably because a small amount would coat the insides of the cyclone on its way through the air path, but not exit the cleaner into the filter because it gets caught up, ensuring that the user thinks that the machine has done a good job, a little bit tinfoil hatless, but the Dyson DC01 standard manual from November 1997, you see on your screen now, states on page 6 that you should only use a little small amount, preferably none at all. It also says that Dyson does not recommend the use of carpet fresheners. A bit odd since they sold Zorb alongside the DC01, but 
These were the dark days of the single cyclonic units which were heralded as the new coming and the most amazing thing ever. Right up until everybody moved on. <sighs> hey ho. Skipping forward in time slightly. Weeks, otherwise this would be a very long video. To the DC-25, the warning about DIY and dust appears on page 8 at the start of the general section. Nice and clear to the consumer. Small amounts are fine, as it says, presumably because DC-25 has more surface area inside of its cyclone system. To the DC-40, the next generation along from that, in exactly the same location as the DC-25, the exact same message as well, which means that the improvements made to the design of the cyclone assembly may not have been that good if it still can't cope with it. Now, things changed slightly here, with Dyson's brief and apparently failed attempt at filterless vacuums. I say failed, because in case you haven't noticed, the current crop have filters. Mm. The DC-54, the manual as well as mentioning plaster dust, also mentions flour. <coughs> we also get an extra clause about it not being designed for use in DIY or building activities. This is true, I've had to save many a Dyson that was used after building work had been completed. Not during it, but... When the owner's doing their big cleanup, when the builders have gone home, the bill's paid and the credit card's maxed out, and they suck up all the dust that's been floating around the house whilst the builders have been at work. And it obviously still not covered. Flowers, a bit odd. Maybe Dyson had a space of warranty claims from bakers, which made them include flour. Or obviously, they realised that flour was the same consistency. Either way, it also now mentions it further down in the what does the guarantee not cover section, something which was missed or not there. In the earlier models paperwork, another thing that the kinetic machine has is a big sticker behind the bin saying not to use it on plaster or rubble. DC-75, or the Kinetic Big Ball, which this manual's from, but it's the same machine, does away completely with the mention of DIY flour and bricklaying, going back to the simple one-liner in both the general use clause and the what we shall shaft you for section. So, yada yada yada, onto the V10. The V10 makes no mention of plaster dust, flour, cocaine, or any other fine powder in the places where every other machine has said it. In fact, the only place it mentions it is right at the back of the manual in the what the guarantee does not cover section. You can see how this could be confusing for the customer. And given the evidence so far, it would be interesting to see if it would hold up in court. Although obviously Dyson being Dyson and the average user being the average user, it would be silly endeavour but as the handheld cleaners are much worse at dust retention through practical and personal experience but also because obviously if you're holding one you could tip it upside down whilst you're using it you could have it at the right angle and obviously all the dirt will fly up and go into the machine it's not as easy as an upright or amp cylinder that will generally stay upright in fact it's probably why the cylinders fill up at an angle rather than straight like the uprights. To be honest, I, I was slightly hoping that with all of this to prove that the V10 that we are dealing with now has not been misused. And in a way, one could argue that it hasn't because it doesn't actually say, as with all the other models, that you shouldn't use it. That was always the get-out clause, you see. Oh, it was in the manual. But it is in the manual still. But it's now just in a, the guarantee will not cover it. So it sort of says the same thing. But I thought it was interesting to see all the different ways it's been shown and explained throughout the years. And also, living with a female, I'm surprised that it's not mentioned anywhere about Tolkien powder, the devil's own fragrance. Our bathroom is always covered in a thick layer of the sodding stuff. And you can see it lined inside of the tools or around the clear head of the floor head if it's been done in the bedroom after vacuuming. Right, enough of all this. We'd best get the filters back together, hadn't we? Push the laptop away. 
And here is the pre-motor filter side of the dice. It's a bit of a shame about those towels, but I'm incredibly confident it won't matter. As you can see, it is cleaner. Not 100% clean, although I, I doubt these have been washed weekly or monthly, whenever they have to be done. I can't remember now. I just had the flipping manual in front of me. That was silly off it, wasn't it? Hang on, if we go here... I've dumped them all in here just whilst I did all of my bits and bobs. Wash filter unit. How often do you actually have to wash the filter in one of these? At least once every month I would do it more. Otherwise it's going to stain. But that is clean. That is fine. This is much better it took 24 hours fish well overnight of a soak in some biological washing powder to get the filth off of there but this is now clean once more the paint didn't come off not too fussed about that so we can slide oh we, we got to line those tabs up look i just realized that I'll try and do this one handed. That was very short sighted of me, wasn't it? But I'm going to persevere because obviously this can show what an easy job this is to do it properly. There we go. Let's just clip back in as well. Marvellous. So that is how you do your V10 filters. You can see that it's all over there obviously we, I, I didn't wash this it is as it was if I squeeze the trigger now look it doesn't like it look filter filter filtro whatever really sure I'm going to have to rest my arm on it because this isn't the easiest thing to do there we go Much more airflow now. Gosh, that's loud. So there we go. The smell is much nicer. Whole machine works much better. So there we are. How to disassemble one of these to clean it out internally perhaps fix some damage that isn't covered under warranty although if you sweet talk nice and nicely they probably will help i think you know the wrong words were asked when this machine was phoned up about but it is very very simple i cannot wait to find more what i also did was this has been washed out completely you can strip this apart very easily there are six screws at the top and one at the back and the whole thing falls apart. So this got a proper wash because obviously you can wash Dysons despite what some armchair experts who make their own funky graphics can tell you. Of course you can wash them. A, it's your flipping vacuum clearly. You can do what you like. B, as long as you do it properly and completely dismantle it, scrub everything with a brush, you will be absolutely fine. And you will end up, if I can open this one-handed with a spotlessly clean interior that was disgusting oh i haven't got my flash on oh, wait i can put my flash on hang on a spotlessly clean inside that's pulled it from somewhere even now that was disgusting in there now it is shiny so yeah Two cordless machines. Oh, this one's so much heavier than this one. <laughs> it's very noticeable. All done and dusted and ready to go back. So, thank you very much for watching. Please comment. I imagine there'll be a few comments on this video. If you stumbled across this video because you need to do some work on your V10, I would be very interested to know what actually went wrong. There's a lot of propaganda around these, but not a lot of real world reviews or tales. So, 
There we go, little special extra video, normal service will be resumed tomorrow. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you soon. Bye bye.